um, welcome to our channel alimika mtandaoni uh, in this episode the third episode uh, we will extend uh, the second episode by giving some examples uh, remember in the second episode we were talking about identification of problem in research and we mentioned some important uh, parts that should be considered when you are writing a, a research process and now we'll pass through uh, some examples of uh, problem statements so that uh, we can get an understanding of how that um, statement of a problem uh, can be written so i'll use some research uh, from uh, different people uh, and i will acknowledge uh, their uh, their names as i explain uh, what they have written so starting with the uh, the first uh, problem of statement from mr agustino mogosi uh, assistant lecturer at the college of informatics and individual education at the university of dodoma in his research that he published the with the title Tools and Techniques for Clinical Decision Support, a case of Tanzania. He wrote something like this. Despite the fact that HIS have been implemented in developing countries, the utilization of medical data collected by these systems for improving operational healthcare functions such as clinical decision support has been weak. So here, in this first sentence, as you can see, Agustino Mogosi tries to explain what the problem is. So, and he says, uh, the, 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 the reason for the problem, as he, he, he goes on there, he says, due to their complexities and difficulties uh, to analyze. So there is a problem here of utilization of medical data that are collected by health information systems uh, in developing countries. And it is because the data have high complexities and have high difficulties uh, to analyze. Therefore, he goes on, Mogos goes on, he says, Healthcare organizations in developing countries have been relying on experts' opinion in building clinical decision support systems. So remember, we have some information systems that support a clinical decision support, clinical decision. And uh, it, these systems help medical personnel uh, in, a, in their uh, decision making. So uh, Mogosi says that the building of these uh, clinical decision support uh, relies only on experts' opinion. They need to interview experts, experts so that they can give their opinion. So Mogosi continues to build up on his problem. He just tries to explain what the problem is. As I've told you, here the topic is a health information system. Uh, the topic is about health information system and under health information system we have what we call clinical decision support uh, systems. But it points out the, 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 the problem that these uh, health information system collect a lot of data but these data are not used uh, to build the um, intelligent clinical decision support systems and the clinical decision support systems that have been uh, developed so far they depend on experts opinion to Mogosi, this is a problem now as we have said that the, the important parts in writing a problem statement we have to state the topic in short then we go to the problem we say about the problem after that we just show the deficiency in the knowledge there in the second paragraph Mogosi says however there is a growing body of literature about data analytics in healthcare to improve health outcomes as well as the potentials and challenges of it to healthcare delivery however None of these studies have explored on the application of data analytics techniques in improving clinical decision making practices in by taking advantage of the available medical and health data being continuously collected and updated by existing HIS. As you can see here, Mogos again uh, tries to show that there is a deficiency in, uh, in the knowledge. So he shows that uh, despite uh, there is this problem, but uh, only few authors have explored, or none of these authors have explored. As I've told you, 
in writing a statement of a problem, in writing a statement of a problem, you have to specifically say what the topic is, you have to mention the problem, and you have to show uh, the deficiency in the knowledge, deficiency in the knowledge. If you followed me in the last episode, I told you about these things that uh, you need to consider what other authors have said about your problem and what they missed out. And Mogosi here says there is a lot. A lot has been talked about data analytics eh, to improve healthcare, but none of them, but none of those uh, authors have mentioned or have explored on application of these data analytics in building or improving a decision making by coming up with a clinical decision support tools that do not only depend on uh, expert opinion, but they can use the existing data that are collected by health information systems that are available. So this is one example of how you can write a problem of statements. Let's move on to another um, author and with another topic um, to see what he or she has explored. We have a, another author who has done research who is called uh, a Professor Msele, a Professor Leonard Msele. Uh, this is a professor at the University of Dodoma at the College of Informatics and Virtual Education. In his research, the impact of memory transfer language, MTL, on reducing misconceptions in teaching programming to novices. That he, was his topic. So here, Mr. Msele says, Although the use of models and animation has yielded positive results so far, there is no one universally accepted approach that has entirely solved the problem of learning and teaching programming. The, the problem with Mr. Msele is uh, there is no uh, universal accepted approach of teaching a, a programming. Although there are some models uh, and there are some animation techniques that have been employed uh, in these organizations to teach, uh, to teach programming, but there is no uh, acceptable approach uh, to, uh, to teach programming. He, he, he continues to explain about his problem. He says, current problem animators such as Jelliot 3, Blue Jay, and Raptor are machine driven. So it says that there are some there are some animators that are used to teach programming, but these are machine dr driven. And he is he says that this deprives the learner of the sense of eye confidence. So the problem is there are some uh, some animations, there are some models that exist, but for him they are. Uh, they, they they do not reflect the sense of of self confidence to the learner to for the learner to see that he, he is part of the learning process so according to mr msele this for him is a problem then he, he points out he suggests a solution he says a learner driven visualizer could be a solution to this problem he is not sure if that could be a solution that that, that, that he is not sure that is a solution but he he predicts, he just shows that that could be a solution. And that is that is the motive of him to go and do a research. Now, he says, teaching and learning programming continues to be a daunting task for both learners and instructors. There is still much room here. He tries to show that there is a deficiency. There is a deficit deficiency. So we have said that there is a topic, a very main topic that is about teaching programming to novices. That is the main topic, uh, teaching programming. Then he goes to the techniques or to the models or to the means of teaching. So the problem is based on the means of teaching. And he points out the models and the animation. But he says that the use of these uh, models and these of these animations have problems. So, and he says that there is still much room for improvement of current tools, methods, and approaches to evolve a learner-driven visualization tool. By this statement, this statement shows that uh, still different researchers, different uh, instructors, or different uh, people have not come up with an improvement, have not come up with better ways to teach programming. So this is the deficiency. This is, he shows that there is still a room. So 
As you can see, also this uh, problem statement has well been formulated and has followed those parts that we have mentioned, the three important parts, leaving out about the audiences that are seen. The audiences are the, the, they are seen on all the, uh, the problem statements that we have mentioned. Uh, here, uh, the audiences are the, the, the instructors and the, and the students. Although they have not just been shown clearly, but they are the, the audience. So he shows that the deficiency, these three parts have been covered clearly. The part of the topic, the part of the problem, and the part of the deficiency. Now let's see uh, another author. There is another author called Karina Titus. Uh, she is assistant lecturer at the College of Informatics and Virtual Education uh, in her research with the title, Investigating the Viability of Using Online Social Networks as e-learning platforms in Tanzania universities. Here, uh, Titus, Ms. Titus says, online uh, social networks are becoming smarter. By memorizing user behavior, such as websites browsed, music listened, friends talked to, and articles read, social websites will understand the basic interest of the person. So, Karina here shows that there is an opportunity, and this is very important for you young researchers. Let me tell you, speaking of a problem doesn't mean that it's something that hinders, uh, brings a bad result to a person. Even an opportunity in research, um, you can do research regarding that opportunity. So, uh, here, Ms. Titus shows or uh, reveals there is an opportunity of using the online social networks as platforms uh, to support learning in Tanzania. And he says, according to a certain author, next generation sites called the social networking 3.0 may in fact be perceived as spooky in the level of accuracy of this. So he, she predicts, she predicts that there is the use of artificial intelligence that will come in the near future uh, that uh, will improve uh, the learning process. Then he, he said, she says that reference in a certain article maintains that social bookmarking, bookmark, bookmarking sites functionality such as Ding will be married with online social networks, enhanced with the self-learning technology. So here, uh, Karina still explains uh, the opportunity, explains the opportunity for her to go and conduct a certain study. But now let's move to another part of uh, deficiency. Despite these potentials, Online social networks are hardly mentioned or discussed as a means for education delivery in Tanzania higher learning institutions. So you see there is a deficiency. There is something that is lacking in the board of knowledge. This is what I'm telling you. While you are, you are, you are explaining a problem of a statement, after you have explained the topic, the topic here is online social networks, and uh, the author explains the, the problem or the opportunity that lies in the use of these online social networks to facilitate electronic learning or to add in the platforms of electronic learning in Tanzania universities. But nothing or not much has have been explored by other researchers. So that point of things that have not been explored by other researchers gives you a means, gives you a way forward to go and do research. So at your problem statement, as you are writing your problem statement, if uh, that problem is researchable, it will be shown by you to explain if there is a deficit, deficit in, if there is a deficit in the board of knowledge. That is what uh, Ms. Titus said, despite these potentials, you see, there is an opportunity. Despite these potentials, online social networks are hardly mentioned or discussed as a means for education delivery in Tanzania higher learning institution. Probably these have been discussed or have been mentioned in other higher learning institutions in other countries, but specifically Karina has narrowed to Tanzania. So you see, this is another example of uh, writing a problem statement. Let's move on to another or uh, last author. I, I guess with these examples, you you have got or you have 
captured how you write a problem of statement. You have to specifically mention or talk a little bit about the topic. After from that topic, then you come to narrow what's the problem or what's the opportunity is found or you are trying to discuss or you are trying to address in that topic. After you have talked about the problem, then show that there is a deficit in the board of knowledge. Now, let's move to another author, Mr. Everjustus Barongo, another assistant lecturer at the College of Informatics and Visual Education. In his research, a framework for automated detection of offensive messages in social networks in Kiswahili. This is a research done by Mr. Uh, Barongo. He says, despite the already suggested approaches towards offensive language detection, most of the studies show that existing approaches are language dependent. So uh, Barongo says that uh, the, the approaches towards detection of uh, offensive, offensive uh, language in, in social networks, as we know that uh, while you are using social networks such as um, Facebook or Twitter, there are some people that say uh, different words that are offensive. There are a lot of languages that uh, are not good to hear. So they are offensive. So Mr. Balongo said that the, these there are several approaches to detect these uh, offensive languages, but they are dependent on language. For example, he, he, he keeps on saying that there are data sets we are prepared for specific languages settings. For example, there are some uh, uh, detecting uh, detective uh, techniques such as that use a uh, language such as English, German, French, and Dutch. He says such approaches raise a need to conduct a study based on Kiswahili language. As we know that somebody may say a, an offensive word in Kiswahili and it won't be uh, detected simply because these uh, frameworks or these approaches uh, that have been implemented in these social networks, they, they depend on languages such as English, German, and French. So Barongo says that there is a need to have a, a detector or that use a Kiswahili language. He he goes on. He says uh, such approaches raise a need to conduct a study based on Kiswahili language, given the fact that it is a complex morphological, syntactical, and semantically language, and having rapid emerging words which demands special treatments. He says this according to Masamba and Mr. Techer in Fmbiri Kuminatan. In addition, he says Kiswahili language is a national language in Tanzania and a lingua franco in much of Eastern and Central Africa. He says, moreover, it is hardly to find a framework. You see now the deficit is shown. It is hardly now to, to, to see the framework that has focused on automated detection and discrimination of offensive messages in social networks in Kiswahili language. So you see now here again, uh, Mr. Barongo has followed those principles that we use while we are writing a problem of a statement. The three important principles or the three important parts. The first is the topic about the social networks, the use of social net uh, detection uh, of offensive messages uh, but and uh, the problem the problem here he says that uh, these are uh, approaches that he used to detect uh, uh, offensive languages or bad languages in social networks they depend on specific languages and there is none there is none of these detectors that use a uh, Kiswahili as a medium of communication. So according to Barongo, now he says there is a need to have a framework and that is the deficit. That means there is no framework that exists. So from these examples, now I, I guess or I think you as a learner that you are learning a research process and we are in the first step of explaining about identification of a problem. Now you have understood how you can write your research uh, problem statement. Thank you very much. I'm your presenter, Agustino Mogos, and this is Elimika Mtandaoni. Ciao.